Okay, this video is going to be about cooking with a crock pot using solar power, but on a very, very small scale. Now this is a, a little bit of an unusual crock pot in my opinion, and I specifically had to seek this one out. This is a one quart crock pot. It's rather small, and I cannot find a one quarter on the shelf. They have a lot of 1.5 quarters. The benefit of this crock pot is that it uses less power. And if you look at the bottom of it, I don't know if that's going to be visible or not. We'll give it a try. Yep. So 75 watts. However, I've never seen this use more than about 70 watts, which makes it a good candidate for running off a small system. Now, a larger crock pot would be using about 100 to 110 watts. Those would be 1.5 quart crock pots, and those are very common. But I wanted to get one that used as little power as possible because I'm thinking small a small battery, a small set of solar panels, and you don't want to have a big old uh, crock pot that uses a lot of power. Now this crock pot is made by uh, it's Croquette, Rival Croquette, slow cooker. Crock pot I believe is actually a brand. And I had to buy the second hand. This particular one is new, or at least it was never used, but I had to buy it second hand. Like I said, I can't find these on the shelf. And this is an old American company. I believe it was made in the U.S., um, but I haven't verified that. It's, uh, you can tell it is an older unit, but it doesn't, it doesn't bother me because they just don't make them like that anymore. That's my motto. I always like to buy old because they tend to be better made and last longer. My plan is to cook a small meal using this crock pot in this small solar generator unit here. Outside are two 25 watt solar panels. Now, my rule of thumb is I would want at least a 100 watt solar panel in order to run a crock pot of the size comfortably. What I'm doing is I'm really pushing the envelope here because it's not enough solar and this solar generator unit here is going to really be pushed hard. I only get 30 to 40 watts during the peak of the day and it tapers off from there. And that means that this unit is going to be draining the battery pretty rapidly, especially toward the end. However, I want to make this a stress test and I want to make it difficult. So I'm not going to do ideal conditions. I'm going to do suboptimal conditions. And that will make the test interesting, and if it works the way I'm doing it here, then I know with a 100 watt solar panel, it would literally be a no-brainer. You just plug it in, make sure the battery's full, plug it in, and just let it cook. This is the solar generator I'll be using to record this test with. And this is uh, one, I actually got it in broken condition, but it's working now. You can see all the display is slid up. And... These are all different brand names. I'm covering up the brand because I'm not going to promote a particular brand. I don't even know who makes these, but I have at least two different brands of this one. And some of them do shut off. Like this one here does not shut off in idle mode. Right now there's nothing plugged in, but it's still running. Some of them will shut off. Like if you turn on USB and don't plug your phone in, it'll just shut off. Whereas this one here just keeps running. So, I, you know, there's different revisions of different PCBs. And the samples I have is at least three different PCB revisions. So you, you might see a unit that acts different, but anyway, the point is, is this unit's pretty common and there are also a lot of units that function like a solar generator that are available on the market. Maybe not this one, but there are others. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to attempt to cook food using one of these solar generators here. And keep in mind, I've only got about 30 or 40 watts of solar coming in and that's not very much at all. So I'm going to be feeding this thing about 30 watts of solar. Then I'm going to plug the crock pot in here. And hopefully I'm going to cook food. I mean, that's the theory. I don't know if it'll work or not, but I'm going to give it a try. And I thought that'd make a really interesting video. Uh, so I'm going to put the crock pot over here in the middle. And I wanted to tilt this solar generator so you can read this display. But I think I'm going to do that manually because I don't want the cooling to be impacted. I don't know if it would or not, but it isn't meant to run, be run on a tilt like that. So I'm just, I'm not going to tempt fate. I'm just going to... Uh, run the experiment and then I'll cut in every once in a while and uh, I think it will take four hours. I'm not a cook or a chef but uh, a lady here uh, set me up with some stuff to put in the crock pot. It's going to be a pork chop, uh, vegetables and some spices and whatnot. So it's going to be real food, a real meal and it'll just I'm just going to let it sit here and I'll keep cutting in checking uh, the system to see how it's performing and hopefully at the end of I don't know four hours, I don't know how long it'll take there will be cooked food, and remember, none of this is going to be plugged into the grid. So if the power was out, it wouldn't make any difference. Everything would keep going. So that's what I'm working on now, and I'll cut back in when it's all uh, ready to go. 
Okay, I got the crock pot, and the lady here uh, set me up with all that. There's a little bit of water in there. It's a pork chop and vegetables, spices. So I got that ready to go. Got the solar generator over here. So I'm going to put the camera up and just go ahead and hook everything up and get it running. Alright, I'm going to turn on the inverter. And I'm going to have to work out something where we can see the display, but you can see it's on. This inverter turns the voltage up over time. Now it's up to 116 volts, 0 watts. 12.6 volts is not accurate. It's actually 12.4 volts. But just go ahead and plug this in and see what happens. Okay, light came on right there. You can see the crock pot's lies on. And I got 69 watts. So this crock pot, I've seen it use all kinds of varying currents. Uh, 69 watts here. Another machine I plugged it into was 59 watts. And I, I know on the bottom it says 75 watts. So right now this is just running as a battery. I'm not, I don't have solar plugged into it. And the reason I'm doing that is that this unit has a little bit of a safety, uh, appears to have a safety measure in it. It won't actually charge to 12.6 volts. And that's interesting because that is exactly what you would expect from a properly designed piece of equipment. If you're going to use uh, a lithium ion battery like that, you're essentially trying to I'm not going to call it float charge the battery. You're trying to load share. It is not a good idea to bring the voltage to the, the highest level possible. Better to stay away from fully charged. That way you can never overcharge the battery by accident. So that's why I think that's why they did it that way. I'm going to plug in a voltmeter here. Let's see if this will make it any easier to. Okay, now it's down to 12.2 volts. That's 0.4 volts off of what this display here is showing. So it's, that display, unfortunately, the voltmeter on this is really inaccurate. It really is. But I'm not going to knock it. It still does the job. So I'm going to let this run for a little while. And I'm going to put the lid on. So yeah, this crock pot comes with a plastic lid that you can't see through. However, I have another lid I could use if I wanted to that's glass maybe I'll put that on later but right now I'm just going to use the lid it came with and I'm just going to let this heat up it probably will take an hour to get hot because that's a lot of ceramic and it probably was just going to take a long time to get to cooking temperature I'm guessing a whole hour just to reach cooking temperature so I'm going to uh, let this preheat just on battery power right now after a little while I'm going to plug in the solar and I have a meter back here and I know it's essentially impossible to read. I'm going to work on that and see if there's anything I can do, but once I get the solar in, right now this is charging another um, solar generator. I'm going to try to set this meter up where hopefully the angle is uh, where you can read it, read the numbers on it. That's what I'm hoping anyway. So I'll cut back in after a while. Okay, so uh, it's starting to get hot. Actually heated up pretty good. I went ahead and tilted the unit so you can read it. We're doing 69 watts at 115 volts. Now the voltmeter is wildly inaccurate. 12.6 volts here, 12.1 volts here. So it's like a half a volt out. It drifts, it varies. So now I'm going to disconnect uh, the solar generator that I was charging earlier, which is a different one. You can't actually see it. It's off camera. And you can see I'm getting about 20 watts there. So I'm going to unplug that solar generator from this cord. Now this uh, is a 2.1 millimeter jack here. I'm going to plug that into the solar. We're getting about 20 volts. Okay, I just pulled off the plastic. I don't know if that helps. That might help. Uh, it has a plastic coating on there because it's a, that's what it has on the meter when you first buy it. And I never took that off. Maybe that's part of the reason why you can't read it. Okay, that's somewhat legible. So 20 volts. You can see there's no power. So I've got uh, this plug here. This is already plugged in the solar generator. Around behind it, you can't see. Uh, and so I'm going to go ahead and just swap that out with the other solar generator. All right. Now you see, let's see if I can tilt this. You can see the solar panel icon just came on. Um, however, another cool thing about these units is there's uh, normally an animated line going from the solar panel icon over to the battery. Well, you're, you're seeing that that's not happening. Once again, it's kind of a safety feature for the unit. Um, what it's basically telling you is, is I'm, I'm almost full. 
the solar generator is telling me I'm almost full and I'm not going to do a full charge. However, it's still taking about 22 watts. And that's just an indication that it's starting to uh, fill up. So this battery is almost full and the computer in there knows that. And it's basically just indicating that. And as of right now, I don't know if you can see, but the fan icon has come on, on the solar generator. But you can't even hear anything. And actually this unit has some issues with the fans at low speed. They don't want to start. I don't know if the fans are actually even turning. I can't hear anything. So hopefully you can see the numbers. Here you got a voltmeter. I'm trying to tilt that so we can read that. 12.1 volts. This is more accurate. And then back here you have the solar coming in and... Sometime I'll probably take a photograph of the solar, but it's a small, very small, it's ridiculously small. It's uh, 20, 225 watt panels that I got from, uh, they were Chinese panels, but they're, they're very nice. Thin frames, but they're aluminum. And I'm guessing I should be able to get 30 watts. When the sun is striking them, I'll be able to get 30 watts. Then you got 10,000 miles of wire. Otherwise, I'd, I'd be getting even more power right, right now. I waste about 5 or 10 watts just in those long wires. But notice how small this is. This is a very small system. And it's not even a 100 watt solar panel. You know, if I put a 100 watt solar panel in the sun directly right now with a short wire of about 10 feet, then you'd be getting a lot more power right now. But I'm not even, I don't even have that. So it's, I'm just showing you how small the system is. Now, this is not a big giant off grid system. This is very, very tiny. So I'm going to uh, get my non contact IR thermometer and also measure the crock pot to see how hot it's getting. And I'm also gonna check the fans to see if they're even spinning on this generator. I don't hear anything. So let me check that and I'll be right back. Okay, I checked and uh, the fan wasn't turning. And this unit I have it modified with a single fan, but at low speed, it barely, it barely uh, there's so little current being provided to the fan, it barely can turn. So I poked a piece of wire in there and what do you know, the fan started turning. So you still can't hear it, it's very quiet, but the fan is running, uh, we're getting some solar. 25 watts now, you can see right here. I hope that's legible. Yeah, that should be legible. I can see it on the camera screen. I know you can see it on the on a computer screen. So about 25 watts I'm getting. And over the lower right hand corner, you see 1.387 kilowatt hour. That's not accurate for this test. I should have zeroed that out, I guess, but it's too late. But it started at, you know, 1380 something, 1 1.52 amps coming in at about 16 volts, which makes me think this is an MPPT charge controller in here, although it sometimes pulls the voltage way down to like 13. And over here on the solar generator, we have uh, 68 watts, 114 volts. And the voltmeter at the bottom says 12.1 volts. All right, so actually, let me get the uh, non-contact IR thermometer. So ambient in the room is about 74. If I point this somewhere else, so let's take a look at, yeah, about 150 something degrees. It's cooler down near the bottom. Right here at the top on this particular model, it gets pretty hot. You don't want to touch it while it's running. That's how hot it gets. And it's just getting started. It'll get over 200 degrees. And let's check. Yeah, there's only a little bit of heat. I can only barely feel any heat at all. Yeah, that's because uh, that stuff came out of the refrigerator and I'm guessing it's going to take quite a long time to warm up. So I'm not going to keep the camera rolling. What I'm going to do is just let this thing sit here and boil. Well, not boil, but warm up. That's probably going to take hours or at least an hour. And then I'll cut in periodically and show you an update on what's happening because this is not something you're going to want to sit here and watch. So probably one hour and I'll cut back in and show you what's going on. All right, so I'll see you then. All right, just a quick update on the crock pot setup. <clears throat> It's gotten pretty hot. Uh, unfortunately, the voltage is down to 11 and a half volts. You really need about a 100 watt solar panel to run a test like this. I don't have that. I'm getting about 36 watts of solar on the input. I did zero out the kilowatt hour meter. So it's probably put like 30 watt hours in. You can see I'm getting 13.86 uh, volts by 2.6 amps on the solar. And 11 and a half volts on the battery pack. The inverter says, uh, let's see if I can tilt it. About 115 volts at 69 watts. Solar's coming in, the fan's on. Uh, the unit is noticeably warm, and there's there's definitely hot air coming out. The crackpot is mega hot. I mean, it's like 
there's parts of it I can't I can't touch I burn myself so let me do a real quick check on the temperature all right so that's about 190 up here at the top where it gets really hot 195 something like that let's check the inside it's about 130 well I don't know I don't know how accurate it is let me see I don't let all my heat out boy it does smell really good though so I know something's going on in there about 134 130 degrees inside and I can smell it uh, you know I can smell the, the food cooking I'm not much of a cook at all I don't cook but you know I know when something smells good it must mean it's cooking I guess so Basically, I'm just going to leave it in here to bake. I'm guessing this is going to take a good number of hours. I don't really know. It could be even five or six hours. I have no clue. So I'm going to cut in in probably another couple of hours with an update on what's going on. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back. Um, it's been well over four hours. I didn't count one hour. That was the warm-up. And unfortunately, the solar kind of went downhill, and it's uh, currently only 4.9 watts. I only put out about 140, 145, 150 watt hours in from the solar, which was less than I was wanting. You know, the unit is running still, but it's down to 10.2 volts, so we're running we're running near empty here on the battery. But that's because I didn't get as much solar as I'd hoped. And really, you need a 100 watt solar panel. I don't have I don't have 100 watts. So let's take a look, and that's going to be awful hot. I'm guessing. Yeah, I can handle it. And it's really cooked. I mean, it's like cooked. I had someone come in and check just to make sure, since I'm really not a chef. And it's definitely cooked. So, all right, that's pretty good. So I'm going to put the camera back on the stand. And uh, I guess we'll check the food a little closer and make sure it's uh, edible. Should be should be pretty good. Oh, I need to turn the inverter off, so I'm just going to do that. Let's unplug it here. Turn off the inverter. And so, you know, 10.2 volts, That's it's not empty. So that's pretty good. Uh, so what I need to do is get the food out um, and make sure that it's cooked. Um, this watt hour count here, oh boy, it's hard to see. 136 watt hour. That's not actually accurate because I zeroed it after the fact. So really, we're probably doing about 150. Now, of course, all that 150 watt hour did not make it into this power bank. Um, the wires here get pretty warm and I know some of it was lost so keep in mind I've always recommended a 100 watt solar panel I don't have but but about half that had I had a half 50% more solar this unit here would uh, it wouldn't be 10.2 volts it'd probably be like 11 um, or it might even be almost full because a 100 watt solar panel is about enough energy to run a crock pot like this in theory so it's something to keep in mind I did this experiment under a rather strain conditions and your conditions might be better if you try this uh, you might have a bigger solar panel um, all right so let's uh, go check the food and get it onto a plate and uh, take a look at it all right there's the end result that's not all of it was in there but really the crock pot was not full it was just a test so you could definitely fit more meat in there yeah. looks all right the meat is absolutely cooked everything is cooked in fact it's probably a little bit too much cooking probably could have shaved a half hour off the time but yeah there's still some food left so anyway if, if the crock pot is full it would be at least two people this is probably like one person but I would say the way it smells the way it looks pretty good um, go ahead and give it a taste and see what it's like okay so the taste was uh, very good so definitely passed the taste test okay so mission summary um, is it possible to cook using a small crock pot and a really small portable battery if you have a little bit of solar coming in yeah absolutely possible absolutely doable now there are a few factors to consider probably the first one when you're using a crock pot you have to sort of bear in mind that a crock pot is not all that efficient and a lot of the heat is just radiated off the side so the side of this crock pot and a lot of the ones I've, I've seen 
uh, just gets too hot to touch, over 200 degrees Fahrenheit. So what that tells you is that a lot of the heat is just being wasted. And you're only putting about 70 watts in. So you have to remember this is not an efficient way of cooking. And there might be a tendency or an urge to wrap this in something, maybe a blanket or something. That's very dangerous, so you should never do that. Um, now if there's some kind of fireproof mat, <clears throat> and there were no electronics in this thing, and I was desperate and it was 10 degrees below zero, yeah, I might try it, but I'd stay there and watch it. And the other factor is I, I didn't have a 100 watt solar panel. Had I had a 100 watt solar panel, I wouldn't have been worried about the efficiency because this portable power uh, solar generator here would be able to run the crock pot for many, many hours all day. And the battery would not be depleted very much at all. So the size of the solar panel, really, I can't see less than a 100 watt solar panel, to be honest with you. A 100 watt solar panel is not that big and they're relatively affordable. So anybody who wants to uh, prep for electric, electric cooking off the grid on a small scale should buy at least one or two 100 watt solar panels and have them available. And they make a good partner with a small portable solar generator like this thing here. And another factor to consider is, you know, if you're really desperate, um, it's nice to have two, two of these. So you have a backup. That way, if your battery runs down, you can swap it out. Or if it burns out, you can swap it out. So that would be something else to consider. The other one is uh, this would not be suitable for a large family. So you have to be aware that this little thing is going to struggle to feed a, you know, a family of four or five people. It took me over four hours to cook this. Now, granted, I didn't fill it. I could have filled it to the brim, but still, that's kind of a long time. That's only one meal, and so you have to keep in mind that this. You have to be reasonable with your expectations. And yet another thought. Sometimes it's better just to go ahead and buy a bigger crock pot that runs on much more power, and just go ahead and get it over with, put it on high, and just run through it. And this is a much uh, slower way to cook. It's, it's uh, less food at a time. And that's why, for example, a microwave, you know, it wastes 50% of the power you put in. It uses much more power. However, it's very efficient. It cooks very quickly. And then it's all done. And then you can turn it off and go eat. Uh, I prefer to avoid microwave, food, microwave foods when I can. Um, but there's it's just different ways to go about cooking. This is the slowest way that I can think of using technology, using solar inverters, batteries. Um, of course, you could always just start a campfire, put this in an iron pot and hang it over. But this video is not about using campfires or burning wood. It's only about using technology, um, specifically solar and batteries. Last of all, a quick summary of the top three things to keep in mind when shopping for a solar generator. The first is to get the biggest battery possible. This unit only has about 250, 60, 280 watt hours. I don't know the exact capacity, but it's around in there, depending on the age of the batteries and whatnot. That's not very much. And of course, a lot of that's going to be wasted. This inverter probably wastes 10 to 20% of that power, so you'll never actually be able to use it. It comes out as heat, so it's wasted. And that's why I wish there were 12 volt DC crock pots that could just plug right into this, the 12 volt outlet, or maybe a 24 volt crock pot. And you know, things like that, I wish they were commonplace. Second, the solar generator should have the largest inverter possible. This unit here only has a 300 watt inverter. That allows larger cooking appliances to be used that are faster and able to cook the food more quickly and get the job done. Also, it doesn't stress the inverter quite as much running a large appliance. You would not want to run this inverter at 300 watts for very long. My guess is the unit would overheat. And besides, you want to have some room for overhead and stressing uh, electronics to their maximum for long periods of time, of course, shortens their life. So if I had a 1000 watt inverter on this unit, running a crock pot would be trivial. And I could run that for many, many hours and never be concerned at all about the inverter. Third, the solar generator should be capable of handling the largest solar panel or solar panels possible. That way, when the sun comes up, the user can cram as much electricity into the battery as possible, as quickly as possible. And the objective would be to end the day with the battery being full or nearly full while having to power all your appliances all day. That's the idea anyway. And a little add-on could be that the display does matter and it's important to know how much power is coming in, how much power is going out, and the state of charge of the battery. And 
different solar generators have different displays. Some of them are not very good. This one is okay. However, the voltmeter is inaccurate and you just kind of have to guess at it. Some solar generators are very good at showing you those things. At the very least, it needs to show the power going in, out, and the state of charge in some way. I wish they were better, and there's better ways to do it. But right now, the solar generators on the market mostly have very simple displays, and that's just the way it is. That's the end of this video. Hopefully it helps somebody. The purpose of this video is not to sell anything or promote any product or service or any particular brand. I don't run ads on my channel. Any ads you see, I don't run them. They're just there automatically. The videos I make are just intended to help people, to share knowledge, and to increase awareness. And also to help people who are interested in preparing for the hard times that are ahead. And making these videos also uh, helps me to pass time as well, so that's great. Okay, thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.